Mark Strand has written 13 books of poetry, a book of short stories, three volumes of translations, and books about other artists, including Edward Hopper. He has a bookcase full of honors, including the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry for his 1999 collection, Blizzard of One. In 1990, he was Poet Laureate of the United States. Here's a line from one of his most popular poems. It's called Keeping Things Whole. In a field, I am the absence of field. This is always the case. Wherever I am, I am what is missing. And here's a line from his new collection. But tomorrow came, and I was not in it. Hmm, thinking about being missing? 77-year-old Mark Strand's new book is called Almost Invisible. He joins us from the NPR studios in New York. And Mark, just to start us off, is there a poem you really like reading? Yeah, there is. And which one would that be? I don't know. I think it's very funny, and sometimes I laugh when um, I read it. I'll try not to. It's called Those Little Legs and Awful Hands. Yes. Night had fallen. A man who was staying at the Grand Hotel walked to the beach, lit a cigar, opened a black umbrella, and leaned back in a canvas beach chair, holding the cigar in one hand and the umbrella in the other. I wanted to ask him why the umbrella, but I was too timid. Then I heard him say, those little legs and awful hands, will I never be rid of them? I patted my legs, then looked at my hands and knew that he had not meant me, and certainly not himself, but maybe another, someone he might have hated or even loved. But down the beach, a woman wearing very large mittens was coming toward him rapidly with baby steps. He jumped up from the beach chair, tossed his cigar, and with his umbrella began to run. He ran and ran, trying to escape, as if he could ever escape. <laughs> It is hard not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are quite a few funny ones in this new book. But it's hard to see them in some ways because there are some that feel so, oh, I don't know, um, peering into nothingness. That's what I do a lot of the time. <laughs> I think everybody does. I try to fill the nothingness with things I make up. I mean, writing this book, I did stockpile titles. I mean, titles would come to me, and then often I would write the prose paragraph to follow. The titles mean a lot here. Was Bury Your Face in Your Hands a line that you had before you wrote it? I don't know where that came from. I mean, I don't know where anything comes from. I don't even know where I came from. <laughs> where were you going? Let's stay with that, too, because there seems to be a lot of looking back you know, where did I come from? A man goes back to his, mm. where he grew up, his childhood playground, and it's, you know, it's it's apocalyptic in, in a way that a playground can be. There's yeah. bags blowing across it. Yeah, it's a bad scene that he comes back to. I mean, as you get to be older, you tend to spend more time looking back and less time looking ahead because there's not much time ahead of you. Of course, there are some some of these poems that are rather more lyric in character than others, and I don't suppose they induce laughter. Pick one of those and read it for us. This is called In the Afterlife. She stood beside me for years, or was it a moment? I cannot remember. Maybe I loved her. Maybe I didn't. There was a house and then no house. There were trees, but none remain. When no one remembers, what is there? You whose moments are gone, who drift like smoke in the afterlife, tell me something. Tell me anything. There's a sad, there's such a sadness there of not, you know, not even maybe remembering the house or the woman. Yeah, I mean, what life's most important moments, they become seconds in one's remembrance of them. You can tell the story of your life in five minutes and leave practically nothing out. 
Well, you may feel I've left a few things out, but I've covered the bases. Speak to, we, we just mentioned the woman, speak to your reflections on men and women in their relationships. I'm thinking of, um, there's a short one here, Trouble oh, in yeah. Pocatello. Yeah, it's the jokiest one in the book. I'll read it. Yeah. Trouble in Pocatello. It was autumn. It was late in the day. A storm was coming. Flocks of birds were flying south. A pink and purple sunset stained the house. The wind gusted. Branches tossed. Leaves dropped like dead moths on a Cecil rug. I'm home, said the husband. Not again, said the wife. <laughs> um, why a Cecil rug? I don't know, because it's a kind of tawny color, and I thought of the, you know, the ground in autumn. I, you know, I don't know. These things come to me, and one of the one of the pleasures of writing this book, as opposed to, I hate to say it, but the lack of pleasure in writing some of my books of poetry is that I don't second-guess myself as much here. I drove myself nuts, you know, writing poems, and they never seemed to be good enough. I'd work and work on them, and what did I have in the end? Just another poem. Well, I'm wondering if we see that thinking in some of the poems that seem to say, you know, I used to have this thinking about, oh, words, let's say in a letter from Tegucigalpa. Uh, yeah. I used to think that they would be sparks that would flare up. There's another poem, The Old Age of Nostalgia, which oh, yeah. I used to bask in the glow of an imagined future. There seems to be the sense of maybe sparks are just there to be relieved of the burden of brightness. You know, maybe... Yeah. Maybe... Uh, this is, the, the letter from Tegucigalpa is a letter to Henrietta in which a man, I take it, says, I haven't been writing you because in the old days my thoughts like tiny sparks would flare up in the almost dark of consciousness and I would transcribe them and page after page shone with a light that I called my own. And then he goes on to say, mm -hmm. now I realize eh, the sparks carry within them the wish to be relieved of the burden of brightness. And that's why I no longer write. And why the dark is my freedom. Yeah, I mean, this is the story of my career. <laughs> <laughs> a young poet who, you know, was thrilled with what he wrote and the sparks came thick and fast. Later on, they don't come with the same force or they don't have the same compelling character. And and then there's the, the awareness as you're older that, you know, it's just another poem. And I don't, I mean, I'm not painting a tragic picture. It's just the way things are. I am perfectly happy in this world, and I hope to live a long time. But I just find my imagination gravitates towards what I think of as this sort of realism. As opposed to that burning, whatever that is, you know, the young artist. Yeah, the, yeah I know. Yeah. Burning with a hard gem-like flame. Yeah. Mark Strand, his latest book of poetry, Prose Poems, is Almost Invisible. Thank you. Thank you.